I already know what you guys are thinking, you know? Before you Photoshop Top 5 Gaming's logo or my face over top of the silhouette of the default skin and send it to me on Twitter, I already know I'm the biggest noob in the game, okay? You don't have to tell me. What I really meant to say was that I'm the bot god. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I'm Jonesy or Tifu's dad. 1v1 me, Tifu. Welcome back to Top 5 Gaming, everyone, and let's get into the top 10 biggest noob Fortnite skins that you should never wear. Number 10, Rust Lord. For those of you that have been playing or watching Fortnite for a really long time, you might have heard of this skit. It's from season three based on pop culture. It's the Rust Lord skin. This guy is constantly doing the take the L dance. Rust Lord is an epic skin that was the tier 23 reward in the season three battle pass. Fortnite was just gaining its popularity around the time season three was ongoing. So you might have heard of the Rust Lord before, but have actually never unlocked it. Some facts you might not know about the skin is that there's a tiny little pin on the vest of the Rust Lord. The pin has a symbol on it, which is the logo for the Unreal Engine, the engine Fortnite uses. Another interesting fact is that the Rust Lord is actually inspired by Star Lord from the Marvel movie franchise, one of the most popular movie franchises in the world. Many people don't use this skin on the daily as it's not that nice of a looking skin, but lots of noobs that haven't played since season three use it. So uh, you see a Rust Lord running around, don't be hesitant to push up and get the elimination. But if he does the take the L dance before you kill him, then um, you, you have to let him kill you. Number nine, Mission Specialist. So Mission Specialist showed up at tier one of the season three battle pass as the very first in a series of space style skins. This particular style is a dark orange and white theme that has an open space helmet to show off the blondie default character within. Sure, it looks like a spaceman, but when it's compared to some of the other space outfits, it just seems a bit simple. Plus it's orange. That's gonna stick out in any background on the map, except maybe the lava, but you can't stand in that. He's also got that giant space helmet. I mean, imagine trying to peek an enemy when your helmet is going to give your position away, before you actually peek. As of right now, you won't really find that many people wearing it. The times you do is usually someone who hasn't played much since that season. Either that or you've just run into an entire squad trying to roleplay Fortnite in the different space skins. Either way, should be an easy takedown. But in number eight, we've got the Omega skin beginning stage. Now for me personally, this used to be one of my favorite skins. Omega with his unlockable armor is great and all, but I just prefer the slimmer characters. It makes me feel like I'll be spotted less easily. Plus it's one of the few slim male skins, which it's changing colors, you could match it to different backlinks, gliders, and pickaxes. However, this was way back then. Since the time of Heroes, we've seen a ridiculous amount of skins added to the game, giving you a whole bunch of variety, no matter what skin style you like. So even players who like slim builds have something new to pick from. The only time you really see many people using an Omega with no armor now is probably because they can't unlock it. A lot of unlockable stages for skins can now be unlocked after the season ends, but when Omega released, you didn't unlock the armor by the end of the season, it became permanently locked forever. So in a number seven, we've got the tomato skin. So you've probably all been surprised by a random tomato head skin at some point in your Fortnite career. If you do Fortnite as a career, I know I do. <laughs> you just walk around the corner and bam, just got that big round red head and white eyes staring straight through you and into your soul. Then he panics because you actually made him jump and walk straight off the building, killing himself. It seriously feels like the most experiences with a tomato head is me trying to chase him down. But to be fair, he does come with a pizza delivery backlink, so he's probably used it. His actual skin is that of a waiter at a pizza restaurant to one the rifts teleport a giant tomato back in time, bringing with it the tribal tomato head berry, which is probably worse in terms of functionality. That crown is probably one of the highest peaking parts of a skin we've seen so far, in fact. Plus, with its brightly colored outfit, no way you're going to surprise anyone with this skin. The majority of players wearing this either just love this skin and the tomato storyline or wear it to represent one of Tim the Tapman's favorite memes. Number six, Giddy Up. It's pretty hard to argue that this isn't a noob skin. I'll happily admit that when it first dropped on the season six battle pass at tier 23, that I was one of many folks landing at Tilted Towers and trying to dance it out around the streets with the rest of the gang. But that was, like most things, just a phase. I mean, you could even find a whole squad of Giddy Ups flocked around an actual in-game llama, dancing it to praise the llama gods or something for Fred. I'm fairly sure most of them were shot on site though. It was one of Fortnite's proper comical skins to be introduced and that's the thing. It's supposed to be comical. It's supposed to be fun. You saw a pro player using the skin in a tournament, then they're trying to show off. The fact is no one going for that epic victory royale is gonna like having a giant llama costume give away your position so easily. Sorry, Fred. And because of the size of it, it'll also cause people to focus on you more than others. To be honest, most people you see in this skin are probably the really young players who just thought it looked cool or wanted to 
be like Fred. But in at number five, we've got the Rogue Agent. Now, the Rogue Agent is part of the Black Vector set. It's designed to be a more functional looking skin. He's got that black and gray camo gear with bulletproof vests and some sort of high tech helmet. It's not a bad looking skin, but it doesn't exactly stand out from the crowd either. It came with its own personal gear, the Catalyst Backlink, and was actually part of the first bundle sets you could find in the shop. The Battle Royale starter pack, however, it did also make a one time appearance in the item shop on the 15th of September of last year for 1500 V-Bucks. Since then, there's no way to get it. So the Rogue Agent has become a bit of a collectible. Because of its rarity, you'll find a lot of people wearing it that haven't actually earned any real decent skins from the Battle Pass from leveling up or just not having that much time to get really good at the game. So when you see a Rogue Agent, don't be afraid to play aggressive because nine times out of 10, these players won't really put up much of a fight. So just be careful of those few good players that just happen to love this skin. And in at number four, we've got Havoc. Now, Havoc showed up in a promotional loot package between Fortnite Battle Royale and Twitch Prime in March of last year. It was on matching back blink. There was also the sub commander skin that came with a matching slipstream glider. The entire package had a complete gray and purple color theme for this Twitch Prime loot. So obviously we're going to get every streamer promoting this and using the skins. To be honest though, most people prefer the sub commander. Now all us viewers had to do to get this awesome loot was link our Twitch Prime account with Epic Games and you're all good. As every phase goes through its cycle though, streamers moved on to newer skins and so did most others. But you can still find the odd havoc running around every now and then that still wants to rep his favorite streamer. Either that or he's got TTV in his name and he's trying to let everyone know he streams. Probably because his skill hasn't attracted much attention yet. But in number three, we've got the Blue Squire skin. This law-abiding squire was first introduced at tier one in Fortnite's very first battle pass during season two. Now at tier 21, you can unlock the Royale Knight and at tier 70, you would unlock the famous Black Knight, which was the max tier at the time. The fact is, if someone didn't manage to level up enough to unlock the better knight outfits, then they most likely aren't that great at the game. As we said before, some people just don't have time. But whenever you see a Squire Knight skin, there's always two responses. This guy's going to be really easy or completely own me. The fact is, you never know when there's a wolf hiding amongst the sheep's clothing, but most of the time, these skins will probably just run away or just not have a clue what they're really doing, which to be fair, does allow you to try out some new moves. But in a number two, we've got War Paint. Now, War Paint is a pretty basic skin. He's got that basic soldier camo on with an added blue tribal theme and unique skull-like face paint design. Surprisingly, this War Paint character is a legendary skin. I mean, let's be real for a moment, though. Compared to many other legendaries, it tends to get lost in the crowd. But the method for getting this skin is probably why Epic gave it that legendary status. I mean, you don't purchase it, or at least not through Battle Royale anyway. You have to own or buy the Save the World's Founder Pack, and then you'll get it for free. So every time you see someone wearing this skin, you know that they own the Save the World side of Fortnite. Now, they could actually play Battle Royale as well, but most would have unlocked a new skin to use by now. A lot of times encountering a war paint skin in Battle Royale means you met someone who's relatively new to this side of the game. They've mostly been playing Save the World, which gives you a massive advantage. And in a number one, we've got no skin. Duh. I mean, come on. You didn't think we'd leave out the default skin, did you? It's the original, the OG, the game starting skin that every Fortnite player knows about. It's also known for being a skin that you'll mostly find to be low skilled players. The actual nickname for it, default, comes from the fact that it's the basic default skin, right? But most people have come to say default and they mean someone with low level skill. They just go hand in hand now. Now, you'll have to let us know what your favorite default character is though. There's quite a few. The only problem with this skin is that it's also the perfect disguise. Pro players will purposely use a default skin in order to trick opponents into thinking they're bad and make them expose themselves. You can get pretty good at telling though by the way they move, whether they're good or bad. However, thanks to Tfue's default army rising, it's become a little bit more diluted. But one thing's for sure is that we were all that default at one point. And I, I still am today. Not really. Okay, maybe a little bit. I'm pretty good at the game, though. You're probably better, though. But that has been our list of the top 10 biggest noob Fortnite skins that you should never wear. Be sure to use code T5G in the item shop. If you pick up any skins, click that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Push notifications on and keep it here on Top 5 Gaming.